Hello class, this is chapter 1.5 and for this video we are going to go through an initial value problem that uses integrating factors. So here's our differential equation xy prime minus y equals x with the initial conditions y equals 7 when x equals 1. First we can recognize that this is a problem that we can handle using integrating factors because we have a y prime term and the y term. The first thing to do is to isolate the y prime term. So we divide every term in the equation by x like this. So now we have to multiply by the integrating factor. And remember that the integrating factor is an exponential. and the exponential of a uh, antiderivative. And the question is, what do we put inside the antiderivative? One thing to remember is that if the y term is on the left, like this, um, you can always take whatever the coefficient of the y term is. In this case, it's minus 1 over x. Now, if you don't want to remem remember that, here is another way to reason it out. Remember that the whole point of the integrating factors method is that we want to write the left hand side in the form of a product rule. So a b prime this is equal to a prime b plus a b prime. So here a is clearly y. So a prime, y prime, a y. And b is our integrating factor. What do you want it to be? Okay, and we, have no, we, we don't know yet what exactly you want it to be. Uh, let me write a better question mark over there. Okay, there you go. So here's what we want. We want a b so that b prime has an extra minus 1 over x factor that b by itself doesn't have. And for that, we need the term inside the antiderivative here to be minus 1 over x. So here's, here's one way you can reason it out if you don't remember exactly what to put in the exponential here. So anyway, we have our integrating factor, and we have to multiply every term in the equation by that, minus 1 for x dx, minus y over x e, minus 1 over x dx equals e minus 1 for x dx. So the whole point of the integrating factors technique is that we can now write the left hand side in terms of a product rule. So this is just going to be y e antiderivative of minus 1 x dx prime equals the exponential here. The right hand side stays the same. Right now we want to take the antiderivatives of both sides to cancel out the differentiation here. So we do that. Okay, so as we said, the differentiation and the integration cancel each other out. So we can just eliminate those terms. We're left with something pretty nice. Now it's a good time to try to solve for that integrating factor. So we have e, oh okay, let's just not worry about the e yet. The factor minus 1 for x dx. This is just going to be minus log of x. Now there should be a plus c here. But in actuality, for the integrating factor, plus c does not matter. So we can set c equals zero. I'll explain in class in more detail why that is true. 
but for now, just uh, trust me, and we can go back to this point later on in the problem. So let's just uh, not worry about the plus c for now. Okay, so we need to take the exponential of this, so that e minus 1 for x dx equals e minus log x, and this is just going to be x raised to the minus 1 power. Okay, so we have that value for the integrating factor. So let's just um, rewrite this equation now. So we have y x minus 1 equals x minus 1 dx. And the right hand side is simply going to be log x plus c. Right, so remember that the plus c term needs to be in every antiderivative you calculate. This is a very special example where you don't have to. Um, I'll explain why later, but keep in mind that for this antiderivative we have to add a plus c. So now we can just multiply both sides by x to get y equals x log x plus cx. And now we have the general solution. To solve for the specific solution, we need to look at our initial value, which is y1 equals z. So in this case, we plug in y equals 7, x equals 1, and we have 7 equals 1 log of 1 equals c times 1. Log of 1 is 0, of course and this leaves us with c equals 7, which gets us a specific solution of y equals x log x, x log x plus 7x. This is our specific solution. All right, so here's a challenge for you guys. Remember in the back here when I said that uh, plus c does not matter? Why not try redoing the problem but leaving the plus c here in? Now, we want to avoid confusion with the c that comes later on here. So why not call this c2? Try redoing the problem for c2 term here. You don't have to solve to it. You don't have to solve for it. But see what happens to it when you go through this calculation. And until you get the general solution. And you'll see why that I said that the plus c did not matter. We will discuss this in class, of course, but I hope this example was instructive.